Hi everybody, my name is uh, Dr. Amit Shah. I'm a consultant medical hematology oncologist based in East Midlands. And this is a presentation for MEMD for Life. This is a case study on uterine leiomyoma or fibroid. So uterine uh, leiomyoma, um, also called uterine myomas, leiomyomas, or I think everybody will know them as fibroids, are non-cancerous growths that develop around the uterus, the womb. They are made up of muscle and fibrous tissues. They vary in size and often patients present asymptomatically, making early diagnosis difficult. So um, the case study is a 40-year-old woman. She presents to the gynecology, uh, gynecology clinic complaining of heavier menstrual flow over the previous year. This was also accompanied by a sensation of fullness in the pelvis, but no significant pain increase. She also occasionally experiences some very mild pain during intercourse. She is a G1P1001. Um, so that means she's had one pregnancy and has delivered once. And she does not use oral contraceptives um, because her husband had a vasectomy. A vasectomy. Um, she's monogamous. She has no history of STDs. Her first menses was at age 10, and she has regular 28-day cycles. Her medical history is significant for hypothyroidism. Uh, she's managing that with Synthroid. Her BMI is 31.2, and she's presently on a diet and exercise program, so her BMI is very concerning. There is no remarkable family history. A pelvic exam revealed an irregularly enlarged non-tender uterus with palpable firm nodularity. So here are the key points about uterine lymoma. You can see intracavitary, subserous, submucosal, intramural. These are a lot of the subtypes that you find in uterine lymoma. The main type of lymomas or fibroids are intramural fibroids. Um, the most common type of fibroid which develops in the muscle womb of the uh, of the muscle wall of the womb is intramural. You have subserosal fibroids, fibroids that develop outside the wall of the womb into the pelvis. These can become very large. You have submucosal fibroids, fibroids that develop in the muscle layer beneath the womb's inner lining and grow into the cavity of the womb. In some cases, subserosal or submucosal fibroids are attached to the womb with a narrow stalk of tissue. These are known as pedunculated fibroids. Other key facts, fibroids are benign, the smooth muscle neoplasms originating from the myometrial cells. They're usually clinically insignificant, but they're very common, most common in benign tumors in women. They're the most common benign tumor you'll find in women. Their appearance are elliptical, pearly white and firm, of a rubbery consistency and covered by a distinct connectivity tissue. Histologically, they are elongated, Smooth muscle cells aggregated into bundles. There is minimal to no mitotic activity. There is also a lack of vascular organization. The average growth rate is 0.5 centimeters per year. Lyomyomas are estrogen and progesterone sensitive. Lyomyomas create a hyperstrogenic environment relative to normal myometrium. Lyomyoma cells contain more estrogen receptors convert less estradiol uh, to estrone and contain more aromatase enzymes. Progestins have a variable effect on lyomyomas. Given alone, progestins like DMPAs or depot um, medroxyprogesterone acetate decrease growth. Progestins can accelerate growth if given with gonadotropin releasing hormones, the GnRH and agonists. A substance, these are a substance that keeps the testicles and ovaries from making sex hormones by blocking other hormones that are needed to make them. Uh, Lupron is an example, the GnRH, the agonist. Uterine lyomyoma epidemiology of risk factors. So age is a risk factor, so incidence increases with age during the reproductive years. So women in their 30s and 40s will most commonly present. So it's seen mo more frequently in Black uh, Afro-Caribbean um, people than other races. Family history of risk increases twofold with affected primary relatives. BMI is a, 
a big risk factor. So patients that are overweight, obese, um, that increases the risk. So early puberty, associated medical conditions, for example, PCOS, um, risk is decreased. I mean, risk decreases with parity. So giving birth at an early age uh, and lightly decreases with the use of combined cocks, so combined oral contraceptives. Uterine lyomyoma presentation. So most women with uterine lyomyomas are asymptomatic. The most common presenting features are menorrhagia, so pelvic pressure, and there may be some degree of dysmenorrhea or chronic pelvic discomfort. Acute pain is less common, but one of the most important of the presenting symptoms. And patients that present with infertility concerns should also be tested for thyroid. Symptoms. So abnormal bleeding, usually menorrhagia, so menstrual periods with abnormally heavy or prolonged bleeding. Dysmenorrhea, so severe and frequent menstrual cramps and pain during your period. Dyspareunia, so persistent or recurrent genital pain that occurs just before, during or after sex. So non-cyclical pelvic pain. Infertility, so that's probably 2 to 3% cases of infertility um, have uterine lyoma fibroids. Acute pelvic pain due to degeneration of lyomyomas. The types of degeneration include hyaline, so transparent in appearance, liquefaction, mucoid, fatty, red, supaneous, calcification, sarcomatose, uh, or malignant. So uterine lyoma is a workup. So you will detect on a physical exam a uterine enlargement with irregular contours. So this should be non-tender or minimally tender. Any woman of reproductive age with uterine enlargement should get a beta HCG test, which measures the amount of human chorionic gonadotropin HCG in the blood to rule out pregnancy. A sonography, the transvaginal ultrasound, TVS, is the imaging modality of choice. So saline infusion can be performed to help delineate the uterine anatomy per optimally, so more optimally. No, lyomyomas may be hyperechoic or hypoechoic, but they will appear as discrete masses. So the one of the best options is a Doppler sonography um, because this helps estimate blood flows. And we'll explain that in a second. Um, so this is the ultra ultrasound imaging of the lyomyoma. So an intramural lyomyoma you can see in the hyperechoic masses in the myobitrium. So these are darker areas below. So this is intramural lyomyomas. Uh, Hyperechoic lyomyomas. So you can see a calcific uh, degeneration in int intramural masses. Uh, so this is typically after necrosis. Let's have a look here. Uh, another, another example of intramural lyomyomas, um, but so these are actually more difficult to notice, can be seen below. You can just see these little bits here so it's harder to find in this image so this is subserosal fibroids so fbr um this is the fbr the fibroid you can see the mass over here and the uterine yeah uterus over here so um so this is intracavitary fibroids again notice the mass very distinct shape so how can you tell a lyomyoma from a polyp, for example, below? What's the difference? So if you use Doppler, Doppler ultrasound, you can identify the fibroid masses easier. So you can see the blood moving towards you is marked in red. So this is moving towards us. Uh, the blood moving away is in blue. So lyomyomas usually appear with blood flow on the rim of the mass. So here you can see another Doppler US uh, ultrasound image showing the fibroid. So this is the fibroid. This is the blood flow here. Um, so adenomyosis. So this is a rimming effect. Um, so this is less apparent in adenomyosis. Instead, you can see the blood flow throughout the mass. So here's the mass. And you can see blood flowing throughout. So it's harder to identify. Again, this is showing you how hard it is to identify certain fibroids. An endometrial polyp. Here you can see one or two blood vessels going up the stalk of the mass. So it's going up the stalk of the mass. 
focal adenomyosis. Um, again, you can see the blood flow surrounding this mass. Fibroid in the cervix, so there's uterus, uh, here's the cervix, and here's the mass you can see uh, barely, but you can see that again, this blood flow here. So this is endometrial polyp. You can just see this little area here. Again, it shows you the difficulty in high, uh, distinguishing the fibroid and the polyp. So below is another image of an endometrial polyp. So it looked very similar to um, a fibroid, actually. So uterine lymoma management. As most fibroids are minim minimally symptomatic, they may be managed by patient education and annual surveillance. Medical therapy includes NSAIDs, so ster non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, for dysmenorrhea or pain, combined oral contraceptives or COX for pain and neuralgia, so LNGIS, uh, so Mirena, for example, for pain or menorrhagia. GnRH agonists are effective for a variety of fibroid-related symptoms, though do not use more than six months without an, an add-back therapy. So use of non-resindrone uh, acetate in combination with Lupron uh, Depot, um, so this is a, a dosage rate. Uh, surgical management includes uterine artery embolization, myomectomies, so they can be performed laparoscopically, laparoscopically, sorry, or hysteroscopically, or open. Uh, open. And this is used if facility is a main issue concern, um, and a hysterectomy as well is an optional for surgery. So our case study had the Mirena, this uh, intrauterine instrument that was installed for pain. And then they moved on to Gosarillin, the GnRH uh, agonist, before having a myomectomy performed laparoscopically. The patient recovered within a month with no complications. Thank you. On behalf of MD for Life, I say thank you very much.